everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I completed a table for a client I purchased off of Facebook Market for $60. Now this table retails for about $2,500 and after tax, of course, that would be $3,000. And the photo you'll see later shows it on sale for about three dollars or $400, I believe. But either way, it is a well-made table, solid wood with metal legs, and it turned out beautifully as you can see here. And it is a nice high-end table. The person I purchased it from was just tired of it and was ready to move on. It's from Stanley Furniture Company here. And it's a really nice table that we got the best deal on. So here I'm going to get started. I'm showing you some of the things I have to prep this table. I've got my sander, my crud cutter to clean off the table. It has been in the basement for about seven months now really it feels longer um, it took that long for my client's sofa to come i believe i've mentioned that before but it was just so much drama getting her sofa delivered it took really long and now the table has to be finished because we finally did get the sofa into her living room so the first thing you want to do is clean it off and like i said it was in the basement for a long time so it is very dusty and dirty and who knows what spiders decide to crawl across it and <laughs> leave their webbing and so on so i'm giving it a good spray with the crud cutter and then i'm going to go through and wipe it down and i did actually spray it twice with the crud cutter the second time i let it sit about five minutes just to ensure it was really really clean and just wipe even spaces i try to give a little scrub where i noticed a lift or some paint residue remaining from previous projects. I had been using this in the basement to hold projects I worked on before for YouTube in particular. Um, and I did have a tarp over it, several tarps, but still some things bled through. So just again, give it a good wipe down, make sure everything is clean. You always wanna clean your furniture before you begin to sand it and paint it. You definitely don't want to sand in any more dirt and grime, and you certainly don't want to paint in any more either. I do want to mention that I had to edit this entire video on my iPhone. My external hard drive will not connect to my MacBook. I do not understand what happened. Um, so it requires a little more, um, I'm going to say surgery <laughs> or research to, fig to figure out how to get it compatible again. But for now, I'm using my iPhone to record this. So that's why the music is a little different. And maybe even the flow of the video might show up as being different too. So here I am going to start standing and I am starting on the curve. But you really do want to sand in the same direction. I know that's hard to do with a round piece because you're like, shouldn't I try to go in a circle or what have you? But you really shouldn't. Just go in one direction. So I'm just really going up and down, up and down uh, towards the camera in your case and making sure I have even strokes. And then I do focus in on a few places that I noticed were raised, like I said, from previous projects that had bled through onto the table. I also want to know I am using a 120 grit sandpaper. The pack I brought out is from my local hardware store and it comes with an 80 grit, a 120 grit and a 220 grit. So the lower grits will really help remove any dirt and grime and also any top layers of stain that your piece may have, stain or paint, depending on what you're working on. And so you always want to start with a low grit sandpaper and then work your way up to the higher grits after you've painted or st stained your piece so that you smooth it out a little more evenly for your top coat or your seal coat.
And now that I've done sanding, I am going to wipe away everything with a dry cloth. And then I go back over it all with a wet cloth. And here you see me sanding down the sides as well, getting off the paint. And really, I removed all of the stain from this piece. It's a really nice wood piece. So as you see underneath, it wasn't a veneer on top. It was true stain. Um, and it came off quite easily with the 120 grit sandpaper. Here I'm just showing you some spots that I'm going to focus on a little more with the sander just because they were up they were a little raised is what I want to say so I found this paint in the mist tint section and I want you to know you can always go to the mist tints if you are on a budget you aren't likely to find black like I did in my case or gray um, or neutral colors, but if you are looking for a color in particular, you definitely want to check out the mist tints. As you see, I paid $5 for what is essentially a $20 can of paint by Valspar from Lowe's. And I even had the attendant check to make sure it was actually black. So they will check the color for you just to ensure they didn't put the wrong one on there. Sometimes they do use black paint or a Sharpie just to block out the color or the code for the paint from the original purchase. So you wanna keep that in mind. You always check, make sure it's the color that you need, just in case I didn't wanna buy something that had been blacked out and come home with you know blue or red paint when I was really looking for black. So I'm just rolling it on even strokes. This is a very wide table. Something in me wants to say it's about four feet across. And I mean, it was huge. Um, <laughs> anyways, you want to focus on making longer strokes with this piece. And I did use a foam roller to make, to get a more smooth finish as well. It required less sanding with this roller and allowed me to reach across the table and make, uh, longer strokes so that my paint lines were more even. And as you can see, there are some streaks, which is going to happen. It's a round table. So I'm taking a higher grit sandpaper and gently running it across the top of this piece just to smooth down the paint. And you can do this in between coats. I did do two coats of paint on this table. So I could have painted it one time, let it dry, sanded it, and then repainted it. Instead, I chose to do my two coats of paint and then sand them down. And then you will see me go over them with a polycrylic after I have wiped down all the debris left from the sanding. After I sanded the two coats, I decided that I wanted to do one more coat of paint just to make sure I got full coverage. And if there were any nicks, like some raised areas that I sanded off um, and exposed the wood underneath, that was also covered.
So now I'm going to be taking a sanding block from Dollar Tree and I'm going to work on some spaces where the first coat of polycrylic was a bit raised or maybe it was just too heavy and I didn't pay attention to smoothing it out properly. And I am going to just sand that down. And I do actually end up sanding the whole table in between coats of the polycrylic or the top coat. And here I want to show you, you see the sheen on the right of the camera on the table. I took the, a foam roller and when you use a foam roller with polycrylic, it does bubble up on the table or on your furniture piece. So it's not going to leave a smooth finish. But this helped me get long, even strokes. So I was kind of experimenting here, to be honest. So after I roll it on with the foam brush, I take a more expensive paintbrush from the hardware store is about three or four dollars and I make long strokes and brush out all the bubbles for left from the foam roller and then clean up the sides of course of the table where there was some bleeding and it worked out really well. Now these are the legs like I said they were in the basement they're disgusting so I'm going to take the crud cutter and give them a good wipe down and we decided to leave them in their current state you of course could spray paint them if you wanted them to be another color or another metallic but we really do like myself and the client we really do like that they have this sort of brassy gold effect and they this was a used table so of course it has some nicks some scrapes um i think there might even be some paint on certain areas not from me um from the previous owner um, but we appreciate that it gives the table some history so it doesn't look like it's brand new, fresh off the shelf. And we wanted to incorporate a bit of that history into the space I am designing. So we left the legs alone. I just gave them a good cleaning, like I said, um, and didn't do anything to touch up the brass. And here you can see some of the wear and tear on the piece, on the legs, and see how they've changed color and have some, like I said, nicks and scratches on them. So the table turned out really good, and now we've brought it inside so that I can get it set up for photos and video for you all to see the final product. So we're just gonna put on a few of the screws. This table, of course, has a ton of screws that go into each leg to make sure it is sturdy and sound. I know for sure that these six screws are needed to make it stand properly, but I wanted it to be easy to take apart for when my client does finally receive this table. I'll likely have to take it apart um, and you know bring it up separately as my client is not close to Columbus. So we're just putting these in, taking our time. They There's just the six, two for each leg. for the final reveal. So I love this project for so many reasons. I mean, who finds a table that <laughs> retails for $2,500 for 60 bucks? I mean, so worth the trouble of scrolling on Facebook Market. Um, and really doing your research on the furniture pieces that you're buying. There are truly some gems on Facebook market. So definitely keep your eye out. Also, this project was relatively simple. I am a perfectionist, like I said. So the constant sanding is just a part of the job, honestly. If you want to have a nice smooth piece, you have to sand in between coats of paint. You have to sand in between coats of the polycrylic and the seal. So it was truly a labor of love. And I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And definitely leave me a comment down below. I want to thank you all for joining me today. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!